There's nothing like rewriting an entire lesson at three o'clock in the morning. But when I read that first reading, I knew what I had written, what I had done for today, wasn't appropriate. To start off, today we pray for all heroes in this world and in the next. All who have bravely endured a situation or an event which was terrifying and potentially life-threatening. That includes anyone who endured a very scary time, like a medical test, like when you had to hold someone as they endured something and you were afraid for them and yourself. Many of us are heroes, but we don't think of ourselves as heroes. Others think of us that way. Even after the brave moment, if you crumbled into tears afterwards, as the load of adrenaline finally dumped from your body, when the event was happening, they were strong, stalwart, and followed the course of action that they had set. Perhaps it was an instantaneous thing. I'm going to do this, and you went and did it. That is courageous. That is bravery. You are all brave. You are all courageous though only when it is necessary or when you are called upon. No matter who or what you are or who or what you save, from what you save it from, you had to be brave and courageous to do it. And Christ was watching and cheering you on while also giving encouragement to your poor guardian angel. Today, on the 19th anniversary of 9-11-2001, we pray for all the heroes in this world and the next. And today, from the scriptures, from the first reading, St. Paul writes to his nascent new church in Corinth and asks, answers their question about why. Why do you preach and teach the gospel of Jesus? What do you get paid? What do you get out of this? He replies that he does it both willingly and unwillingly, both as an action with a recompense and as a stewardship with an obligation, an onus of duty imposed from outside himself. And then, removing that image of, bu of burden from outside, he then adds a comparative imagery when he writes, Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. Though he is a slave, he has enslaved himself to the process, to the cause. 
no one else has done this to him. He has done it to himself. He did this so as to become totally focused, totally immersed, totally in available to all in his faith communities so that he would have a greater chance, a greater opportunity to save some of the people. If they were going to be saved, he was going to put every effort into it. And he did this not for himself. Though when you save someone, or know you've brought someone to Christ, there is a substantial recompense to your soul. The joy is so great. And the love from above is so very overwhelming. You can almost swim in it. But you feel it throughout your whole being. But he didn't do it for that reason. He did it for the gospel itself. as do I. I'd never heard this scripture before, but it is perfect. It perfectly defines my duty to Christ, but why I continue it. Peace to all of you.